going to boarding school mm-hmm. first of all we would fetch water in a river mm-hmm. punishment was washing pigs mm. oh and it was difficult Why are you because washing pigs? it's punishment and mm. it, it you know it, it is one of those things that is meant to instill yeah the the the, the hardship of it is meant to deter you from ever thinking about crime or doing oh something sinister again yeah. but what i appreciate about that is that you know <laughs> after two three times you don't want to really oh, keep going through that you never even want to do it again or even going to the fields you know to mm. to weed or something like mm. that mm. and so with time mm. you quickly come back on track mm. and mm. you realize you know mm. what i don't mm. want to keep doing let me this. go back to the straight and narrow exactly yeah so what happened was um mm. when by the time i came home mm. There was such a transformation in my life. Mm. Uh you know you're responsible really for mm. Mm. how when you wake up, mm-hmm. what you do so long mm. as you're in class on time. Mm. And so it really you see like this water we are fetching in the river mm-hmm. which is not a short distance. Yeah. Is is that one bucket has to help you shower, mm. help you wash your clothes mm. and do your duty. Mm. So you learn a lot of life life lessons there. Mm. Although at that point it was hardship, there were a lot of life lessons that were so fundamental oh, dear. for me. So by the time I was 11, hmm. I would I, I was able to take myself to Embu and back. Oh. I could carry a bucket of water I cannot carry right now. <laughs> I would carry such a big bag. And and so that transformation mm. I think brought in very early independence. Mm, mm, yes, and mm. it, it was amazing. Can... And so my parents mm-hmm. with this what they saw in me decided that I think this is the thing mm. uh to do for all of us. Mm. But I think one of the things I caution is that what works for one child doesn't always work for others. Mm. Um <laughs> going to boarding school also was very important because mm-hmm. I now escaped the beatings that mm. uh, not the discipline let me call it from mom. Yes. Mm. And so um but it didn't work I, I think my brothers handled mm. boarding school differently. Mm, mm. I know our last born really just hated being away from home. Oh yeah. It was difficult for him. So uh, yeah anyways but it worked differently for us mm. and I loved I loved the mm. independence mm. I loved being mm. in boarding school. Would yeah. you consider yourself at that age being uh mommy's boy daddy's da- daddy's, girl. daddy's girl I think mommy's girl. girl any girl any girl I think yeah. anyway that is girl yeah. i think yeah yes and your kid brother the one who was struggling with being in i boarding. think now that we are grown mm-hmm. i think we have different relationships mm-hmm. but i think um so i did mention that my dad mm. was a chef so mm. that the the hours were quite crazy mm-hmm. he would leave at five mm-hmm. and come back at uh, midnight mm. but that's the thing he wasn't an absent father mm. uh because when he came we would sleep on the sofas mm. and then he would have brought some snack of some sort from the mm. hotel having so left at 5 a.m. in the morning mm. and came back mm. but that's the other thing that my dad was so disciplined that despite working in a hotel he actually ate dinner at home consistently home made food yes mm. consistently so mm. that is something that stuck mm. with me that kind of discipline and and so he would wake us up and we would have this conversation mm. about maybe our day mm. we would have as he has his dinner we would have the snack mm. and then he would put us to bed mm. and that's how we connected mm. and because in the 80s i think the job description of fathers was mm. you're out there providing yeah, that's the and the cue wasn't that mm. then because of that you're an absent mm. father yeah so even if mom was the one helping us mm. with homework and all that mm. Mm. i think we we had a very strong relationship with my dad mm. as well mm. Mm. and but um, then again the naming system our culture our culture and the naming system mm. is that i'm named after my dad's mom right. and so there's these usually a bond a there connection. with those yes mm, and mm. being the only girl i think mm. it, it was natural that mm, mm. there was a, a very special friendship mm. not because my mom wasn't my friend mm. she was the disciplinarian so mm. as a child mm. usually that's the person you keep at arm's length mm. but mm. you know with that with my dad mm. um, it was a bit different mm. Mm. and so like in boarding school when mm. i first reported he took me um there was a matatu strike but mm-hmm. we managed to get a matatu to school mm-hmm. but when he came he was coming back he had to hike a lift mm. and it was raining mm. and he sat at the back of a cabin um an open cabin yeah mm. and from embu to nairobi under the rain under the rain Ooh. and and to me it, it now that i look back i begin mm. to see the kind of sacrifices mm. they were making mm. Mm. my dad also i mean and my mom combined mm. their salaries weren't the 
mm. hinges. Mm-hmm. But they made a decision earlier on to get us into, you know, private schools. Mm. And I remember my dad having to sell for 15 years mm. his leave days mm. so that he could afford our fees. In, in and, 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 and selling leave days means that you're forfeiting, you're forfeiting yes. going on leave, yes. having to work. Having to work so that you days. get extra pay oh, and so that you make extra money yeah. for, for you to for, for that sacrifice that that sacrifice i think mm. has stayed with me now that mm. i'm a parent i'm mm. like mm. and having looking back and seeing what mm. you no know, of course the achievements then mm. you get mm. because mm. of mm. education mm. is is quite a sacrifice mm. and for that i'm really grateful mm. yeah because we had you know peers mm. that stayed in public schools mm. and by the time they were again like i said the proximity mm. To, to to the vices mm. by the time they were in class 8 they actually were pregnant mm. or on drugs mm. or on alcohol mm. and stuff like that so that's mm. a sacrifice mm. that mm. really grateful for man yeah. and his uh your dad has since yes he passed on in mm. uh, 2019 mm. so mm. that was a tough one mm. but i think for me mm. one of the uh, things i i recall is mm. that in this presence mm. that I talk about my dad spoke to us a lot mm. and and it was very clear what his value set was and mm. one of them was um you know very hard working mm. mm. and and I remember my dad was very open so mm. in the 80s all parents were number one mm. if you mm. recall mm. but my dad was actually one of the people who said he didn't necessarily do very well in school meaning mm. he was a number one mm. Mm. and he said you know not everybody he acknowledged that not everybody is gifted mm. so he would tell you that even when you he would tell us that and he said school. but he what he wouldn't excuse mm. he would say if there's a come by expression mm. and he would say if this doesn't work for you mm. meaning if you're not in, intellectually endowed mm. to pass exams mm. just don't let your hands fail you mm. and you know now i look back and i realize that was something that he modeled mm. even in the way he he did his work mm-hmm. the other thing uh, now that i am um, you know um, head of organization i mm. look back and mm. i see i've realized that there are different types of people mm-hmm. there are the visionaries mm-hmm. who will have the ideas mm. but cannot execute. follow through mm. yes mm. or execute mm. uh, you know processes mm. the one thing i appreciate though is mm. is that my father had the ability to do both mm-hmm. that when he determined to do something mm. there was a reason why and mm. he explained the mm-hmm. reason mm. and then he was determined mm. to get it done mm. from start to finish mm. and he really emphasized a lot on process and mm. finishing mm. and that's something i cannot tell you how much i appreciate mm. because it is in doing the mundane things mm. it's finding the extraordinary in the ordinary mm. that you get stuff done that mm. vision then becomes mm. a reality mm. and it's a yeah. unique it's a unique ability actually yeah. to have both the uh, bird's eye view and mm-hmm. the worm's view precisely uh, and have both the of balance. them balanced yeah. you know uh, it's a sweet spot because as you correctly put it yeah. some people are only you know gifted for bird's eye view yeah. and some people are executors you know therefore yeah. they'll be extremely good with the detail but not never see so bigger picture yeah so if he was able yeah. to combine and uh be ambidextrous enough for both mm. uh, that's a really good gift that was awesome yeah and then the other thing i really appreciate is the intensity with which my dad loved us so mm, mm. the story goes that my dad i mean his parents were alive but mm. he grew up in a convent mm. and he was very a very staunch catholic mm. and i think at some point he considered being a priest mm. so but my very traditional grandmother because he was the first born mm. implored on him to just you know really have a family mm. and so i think he he feel he, he kind of was i don't know forced into it but he eventually you know bowed down to her pressure mm. and got married mm-hmm. and and um having grown up in the convent what he says was that you know i mean they were living on not so much right and he says that for example food would would be what is left after the priests have eaten mm. and and so um i think growing up without really that and he would see his family but i think that day to day um living without his family i think my dad made a decision mm. that his life's calling was to really be build a family and a family where 
he would be involved and he would see through mm. and and i think he was very clear about that so mm. he had an intensity with us that i now recognize perhaps other parents didn't have with their children mm. so um just so i told you about mm. how he went took me to boarding school mm. how he would sell his leave days for mm. us mm. um at some point my brother i think broke his leg mm-hmm. and and he didn't say for a while then mm. my dad lost his job mm. um at that point mm. and at this point now when they are discovering that my brother's leg is pretty bad and mm. needs to be hospitalized he's out of a job mm-hmm. and so he's desperate because he has kids in boarding two mm-hmm. kids in boarding mm-hmm. and now one has you mm. know a leg issue mm. that if it delays for some time may mm. need to be amputated mm. so i remember he decided he went and asked a friend to give him a job but the arrangement they made was don't give me physical cash just pay for my kids and let me know how much i'm going to or how long i'm going to work for you mm. and so that's and i now know or i at least i i got to know mm. that he would leave karibangi north mm. and try you know different shortcuts to a place like town mm. on foot then so that he has he he saves money mm. so that he's able to then get uh transport from town to current to go and work and that's not a small distance it isn't all. a small distance mm. and then um so my brother is now hospitalized and he sort of like gets the same arrangement mm. but at this point when they're taking him to hospital mm. my dad couldn't sit and wait mm. so he actually took my brother on his back mm. and he started trekking mm. so that they find the taxi somewhere on mm. the way and and so that kind of intensity is something we grew up mm. with and and my dad would take each one of us even as as old as when i started working mm. he would actually take us on dates each mm. one of us mm. and so because of being a chef mm. my, his love language was food mm. Mm. and uh, and so we would be taken to mm. the serenas mm. and mm. the intercons and others mm. Mm. um the choice would be yours mm. and then you would just have a one on one mm. with him mm. 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 yeah That's so <laughs> one time actually mm. i was in the office and we were all getting out for lunch mm. as colleagues mm. and i find my dad downstairs and mm. i'm like oh dad hi mm. and he just talks very easily with my colleagues mm. and laughs about a few things mm. and then he says today I'm going to have to take her away from the park and it's just me and how one day I'll come and take all of you out. Oh. And that was really special. Yeah. 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 So it it, it that bond I think is something that's, I really treasure. That's really nice. Because we knew our father's heart. Mm. We knew what he wanted. Mm. And so even after he passed on, it mm. was very easy to continue executing what he wanted. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Mm. 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 Can you getting emotional? <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's and and those are things that you Uh, you're pointing you started seeing those things yeah. from uh, a lot of these lessons and these values that you're seeing yeah. you started seeing them from back then you know actually yeah can i say that uh, my dad i said he wanted to be a priest mm. and so they, obviously then it, it means that he had a very strong faith mm-hmm. um and my dad as early as i can remember we would be shipped to church early a holy family basilica mm-hmm. early in the morning mm-hmm. and my dad knew all the latin songs mm-hmm. you know that you know catholic mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. the catholic church is very procedural mm-hmm. i mean time for standing time for kneeling mm-hmm. all the uh, latin songs mm-hmm. and it was very interesting because there wasn't any question about what needed to be done yeah but the reason i mentioned this is because you see as a young girl mm-hmm. you don't realize how much your parents determine the compass the your compass or how you navigate life. Mm. And one of the things I noted is I never struggled with my faith for example mm. because my dad who becomes like your first point of call as a young woman on either navigating male relationships mm. or even seeing God as a father. Mm. I never struggled with that because it was very clear mm. what needed to be done mm. or or how he modeled that faith and his values so clearly mm. that it wasn't there wasn't any question about that mm. yeah so mm. that's something i really appreciate that's amazing yeah that's super amazing <laughs> and and um may he continue to rest in peace and to shine on you know yeah. to shine on uh, uh for you and your siblings and for his legacy to 
to to to really live on through you and um through your children and their children's children yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. and i think for me uh, perhaps because it it wasn't too long ago that he passed on right one of the reflections i had was um so at some point i'll talk about his work but you know it it got to a point where he was so clear mm-hmm. about what he was put on earth to do mm. that when it when it was time for him mm. you could he actually kept saying i i look back and i realize the last maybe one year he kept saying i'm so tired i now need to finish my projects in nairobi so that i go to kitui and rest mm. and to me it kept feeling like it's retirement so any parent wants to leave city life and mm. go back mm. But imagine it's on the burial date that I realized to Kitui to rest meant he, he knew his time mm. was up. Mm. That's mm. that's interesting, and I normally say that it's good. The mm. Bible says, mm. uh, "Know the days, um, number your days." Number your days. Mm. And so I, I and I look back as much as I miss him. Mm. I look back and I I realize that I want to live my life in mm. such a way mm. that because it it wasn't so difficult to let go mm. because. Truly, truly, he had done mm. what he needed to do for mm. us. Yeah. Mm. So mm. that I'm grateful for. Mm. He had done his part. Yeah, mm. he had. In our lives, he had. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm.